This is Paul Eckberg from the Division of Infectious Diseases at Stanford University. This video is intended to be part one of the overview of antibiotics that target nucleic acids, sometimes loosely referred to as DNA synthesis inhibitors or DNA damagers. A single class of antibacterials called the quinolones or fluoroquinolones will be discussed here, while the other classes that target nucleic acids will be discussed in part two. Learning objectives include describing the mechanism of action of the fluoroquinolones, explain structure activity relationship in the context of antibiotic activity, summarize the spectrum of activity and the main clinical uses of the fluoroquinolones, list the bacterial resistance mechanisms associated with this class, and list the key adverse effects associated with the fluoroquinolones. The quinolones are depicted here in the upper right-hand corner, highlighted in the yellow box, as targeting a bacterial enzyme called DNA topoisomerase. Ciprofloxacin is listed here as one representative example. Originally developed as quinolones in the 1960s, the later addition of a fluorine to the chemical structure, seen here highlighted in the orange circle on the chemical structure, led to a change in nomenclature to the fluoroquinolones. This term is used more commonly than quinolones in everyday clinical practice. The addition of the fluorine led to a number of improvements in potency, antibacterial spectrum, pharmacokinetics, and safety. Many fluoroquinolones have been synthesized since the 1980s. However, post-marketing detection of a number of rare but serious adverse events have led to the withdrawal of several fluoroquinolones over the years leaving only a few available and marketed fluoroquinolones in the United States, as shown here in the yellow box. At a very basic level, all fluoroquinolones block DNA replication and synthesis by binding to bacterial enzymes involved in DNA supercoiling, called the topoisomerases. There are two main types of topoisomerases, topoisomerase 4 and DNA gyrase. Topoisomerase 4 is the main target in gram-positive pathogens, which decatenates DNA for separation into daughter cells during the process of DNA replication. DNA gyrase appears to be the primary fluoroquinolone target in gram-negative bacteria, and this enzyme introduces negative superhelical twists and removes positive twists ahead of the replication fork during replication, as you can see depicted in the cartoon. Interestingly, DNA gyrase also functions as topoisomerase 4 in organisms that lack this particular enzyme, such as Mycobacterium tuberculosis, Treponema pallidum, the cause of syphilis, and Helicobacter pylori. The fluoroquinolone class offers an excellent example of structure activity relationship, which is the relationship between unique structural moieties and side chains and specific antibacterial activity. This figure demonstrates some examples where chemical modifications or side chains at specific positions, numbered 1 through 8 in counterclockwise fashion, lead to different advantages, whether it's affinity for a topoisomerase enzyme target, as seen here in positions 2, 3, 4, and 6, or strengthening potency against a number of different bacteria or specific types of bacteria, such as position 5 for gram positives or position number 8 versus anaerobic pathogens. You don't need to memorize these specifics. However, the concept is important because nearly all antibiotics have some sort of structure activity relationship. And you will later see that there's a structure toxicity relationship with these chemical modifications as well. Focusing on the commonly available fluoroquinolones as listed here in the blue box, Ciprofloxacin is among the oldest members and is thought of as a narrow spectrum agent with primarily gram-negative activity. The remaining three fluoroquinolones, levofloxacin, gemifloxacin, and moxifloxacin, are newer broad-spectrum fluoroquinolones, providing activity versus gram-positive pathogens as well, such as pneumococci, gram-negatives, and atypical pathogens. And for this reason, you might see these newer quinolones called respiratory fluoroquinolones. With regard to clinical use, the fluoroquinolones have been among frontline choices for common community-acquired infections, such as community-acquired pneumonia and urinary tract infections. The common use of newer respiratory fluoroquinolones 
and community-acquired pneumonia make sense given their spectrum of activity, namely their activity against Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, Moroxella species, and atypical pathogens. However, the routine use of fluoroquinolones in urinary tract infection has been recently compromised by a dramatic rise in fluoroquinolone-resistant gram-negative rods, especially E. coli, which is the most common cause of urinary tract infection worldwide. You can also see in the last bullet that fluoroquinolone resistance among Neisseria species has increased to the point where fluoroquinolones are no longer recommended as a treatment choice for gonorrhea. On the next slide, we'll discuss how these bacteria develop resistance against the fluoroquinolones. With knowledge of the fluoroquinolones mechanism of action, you can surmise how bacteria might develop resistance against this class of antibiotics. One common mechanism is alteration of the topoisomerase target via mutations in the genes that encode them. This is depicted in the figure, where a gyre-A gene mutation leads to an alteration in the structure of the gyre-A subunit, which prohibits bindings of fluoroquinolones. Another mechanism prevents the accumulation of fluoroquinolones from the interior of the bacterial cell, whether by blocking fluoroquinolone entry into the cell, for example, outer membrane protein alterations, or the rapid pumping of fluoroquinolones out of the bacterial cell via overexpressed efflux pumps. Many such efflux pumps have been described, and you don't have to memorize these. Finally, a few other resistance mechanisms have been described recently that are less fully understood, including horizontal acquisition of plasmid-mediated genes that might encode fluoroquinolone modification or other multidrug resistant enzymes, and repair enzymes that repair DNA strands that were previously damaged by fluoroquinolones, thus allowing for a continued DNA replication in the face of fluoroquinolone concentrations. Finally, this slide provides an overview of the adverse events associated with fluoroquinolone use. Similar to the structure-activity relationship described previously, the fluoroquinolones exhibit structure-toxicity relationship where certain chemical modifications at specific chemical positions may lead to unique toxicities. As one example, certain modifications at position 8 might increase a patient's risk for phototoxicity, a relatively rare adverse event. The most common type of adverse event, as you might guess, is gastrointestinal tolerance. Importantly, the emergence of fluoroquinolone-associated Clostridium difficile-associated disease in recent years, including disease due to a hypervirulent strain of Clostridium difficile, has led to hospital formulary restrictions and other stewardship measures to limit their indiscriminate or widespread use. Central nervous system types of events are not uncommon, including dizziness, anxiety, and confusion. Tendinopathy may occur, which might include tendon defects as well as overt tendon rupture. For example, the Achilles tendon might rupture after even a short course of fluoroquinolone therapy. This particular adverse event is especially observed in elderly patients or concomitant corticosteroid use. Fluoroquinolone associated prolongation of the QT interval, which is the interval between the Q wave and the T wave on the electrocardiogram, is very important, as this can lead to arrhythmias, including a life-threatening arrhythmia called torsade de pointe, as seen in the figure. Dysglycemia, or altered blood glucose levels, which is due to fluoroquinolone-mediated closing of the pancreatic beta cell potassium channels, might occur, including high blood glucose or low blood glucose. Hypersensitivity, as you can see, is rare and includes hives or urticaria, rash, or more severe events, including anaphylaxis. And phototoxicity, as I just mentioned, is related to structure, that is a halogenated position number eight, is rarely seen with the currently available fluoroquinolones. And finally, there's a question as to whether this class can potentially lead to retinal detachment, which is obviously important. However, the jury's out as to whether there's a high risk for this particular event with this class of agents.